Okay, my friends, I'm just going to let loose and go right into it. If you know this the California governor or know anybody that knows him or know how to get through to him or speak to him about climate change, he's, his statements are that this is real, this is no joke, and we're in big trouble. The debate is over around climate change. He told the reporters, this is a climate damn emergency. This is real and it's happening. And I have the solution to this, Governor, and I need somebody's help. And I'm going to show you why I can say this. Somebody, and I expect you, sir, to respond to me. Please. This is critically important. All right. During World War II, my father ran a car on, on water through a venturi which made it explode like just like that and and then but it was so explosive and so much energy it melted the pistons they had to additionally put in kerosene but what happens is light comes through like this this is this is light same exact same thing identical it happens in water identical no difference whatsoever light really is a liquid it might as well be water now here it comes, bip, 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 bip. that's a pulsed red laser. There's a pulse of energy inside there, which is this particle right here. And so light is a particle. It's back-to-back -back electrons. If you took and cut that in half, you'd have an electron. When you put the two of them together, you have a photon. Photons bounce off things and create energy and light. Electrons, half of that, would fuse to things and explode them and destroy them. But my point is, right here is the venture. This is light. That light is accelerating to go through that venturi. When it goes through the venturi, because of this particular style of crushing the particles together, there's a weak portion and there's a strong portion. And the weak portion is the black and the strong portion is the white. And we can actually literally separate the two of them. And in between here, that's a raw electricity, a raw electrons. It changed from this which is not very energetic, to this. That is an, an enormous increase. No physical change whatsoever here. There's two venture. It's a venturi here, which forces it without doing any, we didn't have to add any extra energy at all. It just did it by itself to crush through here, separates these particles, and I'm telling you right now, half of this is literally electricity that we should be able to harvest out of there much more efficiently than than a solar panel. And you could possibly be able to put these venturis right on top and have the solar panel below and have them coming through that and accelerating right into that panel. Because this is high voltage. This is very high voltage. Okay, I expect to hear something from the governor of California because I'm telling you right now, this is accelerated light. That light is going through a venturi. It's increasing its energy potential and it is literally dividing the particles of light into the strong and the weak force, which is dark matter and explosive matter. And I can show that, and I can show it in great detail, because these are the particles, the dark and the light. That is dark matter and dark energy. And that is concussing right there, and the white part of this ball is walking away from the black part of the ball. And two of them together, back to back, is a photon, basically neutral, bounces into the thing, creates light and luminosity. Half of that, which would be an electron will hurt you and vast quantities of these hitting you at one time will kill you vast quantities of these hitting you at one time will make you glow all right let's see what happens to these when they hit this venturi which is the separator of particles and not only can we do this with light and create the electrons and then separate them from the muons, we can also do this with hydrogen and oxygen using water. And we will get raw electricity out of it. Alright, you saw it coming in. It was back-to-back -back particles. 
at the venturi, the black ones roll away. They do not emit, they do not absorb, they do not reflect, they do not interact. They get out of the way and they come back in after the explosive fermion electron showers are done. Exactly what they're asking for from Fermi and from all the rest of them. Here's the muon, the black ball, and here's the electron shower, the showers that I showed. And these are high voltage particles coming in and slamming into a less, you know, into another area and, and particles, which turn into particles. And these are the electron showers, and these are the black balls. And together they make an electron, and only the white ball has a, a field around it. The black one just doesn't do anything. It just happens to be the the holder, the bringer together of the white ones. Because otherwise that the white one would never get this close to the other white one. They would try to get away from each other like they do here. But when you throw a black one in the mix and, and it's sort of just rolling, once it hits this though, it's a whole new ball game. That's when they separate. That's when we can harvest the electrons. I, and I think that's like an unbelievable, unbelievable increase in energy right at that venture. All right, this is the Royal Institute. About six months ago, they finally admitted there's something wrong with the Royal, with the um, Bohr model because I've been f doing this for two, three years now, posting, showing that th there is extra particles that they had no clue about. Now listen to this. With the standard model, that's it. we found the crack finally in our understanding of particle physics. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. In fact, the only way we think we can explain what's going on is if there are new particles in the universe associated with new physics processes beyond those that we understand, and that these new particles are interfering with the B mesons as they decay and suppressing the decay to muons compared to electrons. Remember I just talked about muons and electrons? There is a difference between the two, and they can literally separate one from the other and come back together, which they do at the Venturi. The black balls walk right away. So originally we saw they were 100% attached, totally, nicely, very elegantly patched together there, like two bar magnets, and then they just went on their separate way. Then they came back together. So they're finding that there is a difference in what this, this is the dark matter. That is the dark matter. It's dark. It doesn't absorb, it doesn't emit, it doesn't interact, it doesn't do anything. Although it brings stuff together. It's like gravity. Now, the other, the white part explodes like a bomb. It's identical to what they're asking for. There's no difference whatsoever. A zero. So, what I say is at that Venturi, we can harvest up some of these electrons. All right, now don't forget, electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons. So, as we explode this small particles, which is the hydrogens, and water, H2O. So you got a couple of hydrogens and the water. When that goes through that jet, these hydrogens turn into all of their electrons. And for that brief instant, coming out of the Venturi, they are virtually electrons, the hydrogens, I'm sure. Because they're just nothing but electrons. And if, hydrogen is always the thing that does everything. Except, oh, yeah, it's always hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Well, of course. It's the smallest package of electrons there is. And it still consists of 1,837 electrons. Because there's nothing but electrons. Now, the Royal Institute says there has to be other particles we don't know about. No. there are. Uh, these are the electrons, and we just never considered them to be the source of nucleuses. We always just consider them to be floating around out in the, uh, around the outside of a big gigantic protons. No, absolutely not. Every proton consists of 1,837 electrons. So this is like a second proton. This is like a third proton. Those are hydrogens. You don't even know about this. Most people have no clue. Hydrogen has three different main isotopes, and then it has a tazillion other isotopes in between, and then you go up into helium. Now, in my model, it's 7,350 electrons when you hit helium. And this is 100% stable because it has exactly the right number of electrons to balance the electrons that are in the outer regions that are trying to get into it. 
Now every other one sort of will take one on and give one up every now and then, but this one here will not give up or take in. These will. I can go to 1850, 1890, 2000, 2500. I can force electrons in there, and that's called Brown's gas. And the way they do that is they force electricity into water. And then the water molecules, the H2Os, build, they, they suck up the electrons. And instead of 1837, it goes 1850, 1890, 2500 electrons. And then when you use that, zoom! It just melts things instantly. They use it for welding and for all that kind of stuff. And it just instantly melts into whatever it's melting into. Bricks, ceramic, tile, concrete, titanium. It'll vaporize titanium. It's, a high, it's all 100% electrons at that point when you push it into Brown's gas. Now, I, I know about this stuff a lot. I expect to hear from somebody. My father ran a car on water. We can do it again. All we need to do is suck off the hydrogen, and then we can recombine it, and then we're going to make it into just like gas that we have now. You know, we're going to be putting back into the pistons a gaseous form of a combustive substance, but it's going to be made from water instead of hydrocarbons. Because once you burn off the hydrocarbons, you're just using the hydrogen. You're just using the hydrogen. Then now you got to get rid of somehow get rid of, figure out what to do about the carbons. The carbons going to be floating all over in the atmosphere. And of course they attach to oxygen, so you're hydro, you know carbon dioxide. Um, anyway, this is the solution. This is the solution, and it is elegant because the infrastructure doesn't have have to change at all. All we have to do is be able to create this substance which is going to be from water and it's a very very high speed tss, going through separating and then putting it into the pistons to re-explode in there just like you would gasoline and it's going to be some kind of module we're going to have to have that is probably battery operated some kind of electrically operated for now and at some point in the future it might be some kind of mechanical device that runs off a cam i don't know i have no clue but for now we need to start doing some work and investigating i put out videos about this a lot of them a lot of them and i see a lot of people now talking about this as a clean source of energy but in order to get the hydrogen to do this combustion like i'm talking about they have to use electricity well we're getting the hydrogen by using the venturi Please, somebody get a hold of me. I don't want to talk about this.